Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the anatomy of the superficial muscles of the back. To begin with, the muscles of the back can be divided into three groups. First is the superficial group of muscles that are associated with the movements of the shoulder. Then comes the intermediate group of back muscles that are associated with the movements of the thoracic cage. And then we have the deep group of back muscles that are associated with the movements of the vertebral column. So looking at the superficial back muscles, they are situated under the skin and superficial fascia. They originate from the vertebral column as you can see right here and attach to the bones of the shoulder that is mainly the clavicle, the scapula and the humerus. All these muscles are therefore associated with the movements of the upper limb. Now let's understand which are the superficial group of back muscles. So we have mainly the trapezius that is a muscle that you see right here. The latissimus dorsi, the one that you see right here. The levator scapulae and the rhomboids. Now I'll show you the levator scapulae muscle and the rhomboids in another diagram. Now, as you can see here, the trapezius muscle and the latissimus dorsi muscle lie the most superficially, while the trapezius covers the rhomboids and levator scapulae muscle. Now, in this diagram, under the trapezius muscle, here you can see that this is the rhomboid muscle, this is the rhomboid major, and this is a rhomboid minor muscle. Similarly, on the right side, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor. And then we have the levator scapulae muscle that you see right here. Concising the important points under the introduction to the superficial muscles of the back, the muscles of the back can be divided into three groups, mainly the superficial, intermediate and deep. The superficial muscles are associated with the movements of the shoulder. The intermediate muscles are associated with movements of the thoracic cage. And the deep muscles are associated with the movements of the vertebral column. Now the deep muscles develop embryologically in the back and are therefore described as intrinsic muscles. Whereas the superficial and intermediate muscles do not develop in the back and are classified as extrinsic muscles. Now the superficial back muscles are situated underneath the skin and superficial fascia. They originate from the vertebral column and attach to the bones of the shoulder that is mainly the clavicle, scapula and humerus. And all these muscles are therefore associated with the movements of the upper limb. Now the muscles in this group are the trapezius, the latissimus dorsi, the levator scapulae and the rhomboids. The trapezius and the latissimus dorsi lie the most superficially with the trapezius covering the rhomboids and levator scapulae. Now let's learn about each of these muscles, its origin, insertion, nerve supply and action in detail. So first let's learn about the trapezius muscle. Here in this diagram you can see the origin of the trapezius muscle that is mainly from the medial one third of the superior nuchal line. Here you can see the superior nuchal line and the trapezius muscle originates from the medial one third of the superior nuchal line, from the external occipital protuberance, from the ligamentum nuchae that is a green colored structure right here. It also originates from the C7 spine, the T1 to T12 spines as you can see right here. So this is the entire origin of the trapezius muscle. Now let's look at the insertion of the trapezius. This muscle has three fibers that is mainly the upper fibers, the middle fibers and the lower fibers. So the upper fibers insert into the posterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle bone right here. Looking at the middle fibers, here you can see the scapula bone, the spine of the scapula and here is the acromion process. So the middle fibers of the trapezius insert into the medial margin of the acromion process right here and also to the upper lip of the crest of the spine of the scapula as you can see right here. Moving on to the lower fibers of the trapezius, it inserts into the apex of the triangular area at the medial end of the spine. That is, it mainly 
inserts into the medial end of the spine of the scapula. Now, understanding the nerve supply of the trapezius, it is mainly supplied by the spinal part of the accessory nerve that is cranial nerve number 11. And it also receives branches from the C3 and C4 spinal nerves. Next, looking at the action of the trapezius muscle, the upper fibers elevate the scapula as in shrugging. As you can see in this diagram, this is the action of shrugging the shoulders. The middle fibers of the trapezius retract the scapula. As you can see here, this is the action of retracting the scapula. Now, the upper and lower fibers of the trapezius together rotate the scapula forwards around the chest. So, here you can see this is the action of pull of the lower fibers of the trapezius. This is the action of pull of the middle fibers of the trapezius. And in this way, the scapula rotates forwards around the chest. Now, as a whole, the trapezius muscle steadies the scapula. Now, concising the important points of trapezius, it originates from the medial one-third of the superior nuchal line, the external occipital protuberance, the ligamentum nuchae, C7 spine, the T1 to T12 spines and also the supraspinous ligaments. The insertion is that the upper fibers insert onto the posterior border of the lateral one-third of the clavicle, the middle fibers insert into the medial margin of the acromion process and the upper lip of the crest of the spine of the scapula and the lower fibers insert onto the apex of the triangular area at the medial end of the spine. Now the nerve supply is mainly by the spinal part of the accessory nerve and branches from the C3, C4 spinal nerves. Now, the action is that the upper fibers mainly help in elevating the scapula as in shrugging. The middle fibers retract the scapula and the upper and lower fibers together rotate the scapula forwards around the chest. And as a whole, the trapezius muscle steadies the scapula. Next, let's learn about the latissimus dorsi muscle in detail. So, here we have the muscle. Looking at its origin, the latissimus dorsi muscle originates from the posterior one-third of the outer lip of the iliac crest. Here you can see this is the ilium bone. Here is the iliac crest and it originates from the posterior one-third of the outer lip of the iliac crest. It also originates from the posterior layer of the lumbar fascia as you can see right here. It originates from the spines of T7 to T12 as you can see right here and also from the inferior angle of the scapula. Here you can see the scapula. And here is the inferior angle of the scapula. So, it also originates from there. Now, looking at the insertion of the latissimus dorsi, the muscle winds around the lower border of the teres major muscle and it forms the posterior fold of the axilla. Now, the tendon is twisted upside down as you can see here, the twisted tendon of the latissimus dorsi and it is inserted into the floor of the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus bone. If you have seen my video on the humerus bone, you can see that there is a structure called the intertubercular sulcus. So, that is where the latissimus dorsi muscle inserts onto. Now, looking at the nerve supply of the latissimus dorsi, it is mainly supplied by the thoracodorsal nerve. Now, let us understand the actions of the latissimus dorsi muscle. It mainly helps in the movements of adduction as you can see in this diagram, extension and medial rotation of the shoulders. The latissimus dorsi muscle also helps in violent expiratory effort like the one we do in cuffing or sneezing. It is also called the climbing muscle. The latissimus dorsi also helps in holding the inferior angle of the scapula in place. As we all know that it crosses and inserts onto the humerus. So, it stabilizes or holds the inferior angle of the scapula in place. Concising the points that we learnt under the latissimus dorsi, it originates from the posterior one-third of the outer lip of the iliac crest, the posterior layer of the lumbar fascia, the spines of the T7 to T12 and the lower four ribs and also the inferior angle of the scapula. The insertion of the latissimus dorsi is that the muscle winds around the lower border of the teres major muscle and forms the posterior fold of the axilla. 
and finally the tendon is twisted upside down and is inserted into the floor of the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus the nerve supply is mainly by the thoracodorsal nerve and the actions include adduction extension and medial rotation of the shoulder it helps in violent expiratory effort like coughing and sneezing it is called the climbing muscle and it also holds the inferior angle of the scapula in place next let's learn about the levator scapulae muscle in detail so here you can see the levator scapulae muscle it originates from the transverse processes of c1 to c4 vertebrae as you see right here and it inserts into the superior angle and the upper part of the medial border of the scapula as you can see right here the nerve supply of the levator scapulae is a branch from the dorsal scapular nerve and also from the branches of the c3 and c4 spinal nerves now looking at the action of the levator scapulae it helps in elevation of the scapula right here and also it steadies the scapula during the movements of the arm concising the points that we learnt under the levator scapula it originates from the transverse processes of c1 c2 c3 and c4 it inserts onto the superior angle and the upper part of the medial border of the scapula its nerve supply is a branch from the dorsal scapula nerve and also branches from the c3 and c4 spinal nerves now its action is that it helps in elevation of the scapula and it also steadies the scapula during the movements of the arm next let's learn about the rhomboids in detail so here we have the rhomboid minor muscle and here is the rhomboid major muscle first let's learn about the rhomboid minor it originates from the lower part of the ligamentum nuque and the spines of c7 and t1 vertebra as you can see right here and it inserts into the base of the triangular area at the root of the spine of the scapula as you can see right here this is the medial border of the scapula and here is the root of the spine of the scapula now the nerve supply of the rhomboid minor is the dorsal scapular nerve c5 spinal nerve and the action of the rhomboid minor is retraction of the scapula moving on to the rhomboid major muscle it originates from the spines of the t2 to t5 thoracic vertebrae as you can see right here and it inserts onto the medial border of the scapula below the root of the spine as you can see right here it is supplied by the dorsal scapula nerve that is the c5 spinal nerve and its action is similar to that of the rhomboid minor muscle that is the retraction of the scapula concising the points that we learnt under the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major the rhomboid minor muscle originates from the lower part of the ligamentum nuque and the spines c7 and t1 it inserts onto the base of the triangular area at the root of the spine of the scapula its nerve supply is the dorsal scapular nerve and action is the retraction of the scapula looking at the rhomboid major it originates from the spines of t2 to t5 thoracic vertebrae and the supraspinous ligaments it inserts onto the medial border of the scapula below the root of the spine its nerve supply is the dorsal scapular nerve and its action is the retraction of the scapula now after having learned about the superficial muscles of the back in detail let's learn about two important structures one is the triangle of auscultation and then we have the lumbar triangle of petit so first let's look at the triangle of auscultation so right here in this diagram we can see that this is the trapezius here is the latissimus dorsi here is the scapula bone now the triangle of auscultation is nothing but a small triangular interval that you see right here it is bounded medially by the lateral border of the trapezius as you can see right here is bounded medially by the lateral border of the trapezius it is bounded laterally by the medial border of the scapula and it is bounded inferiorly by the upper border of the latissimus dorsi muscle now the floor of the triangle is formed by the 6th and 7th ribs the 6th intercostal space 
and the rhomboid major muscle that you see right here. Now this is the only part of the back which is not covered by big muscles. And the respiratory sounds of the apex of the lower lobe of the lungs that is heard through a stethoscope are better heard over this triangle on each side of the body. Right here. Next let's learn about the lumbar triangle of Petit. Right here you can see another triangle. It is a small triangle that is surrounded by muscles. Now this is bounded medially by the lateral border of the latissimus dorsi. It is bounded laterally by the posterior border of the external oblique muscle. Here you can see this is the external oblique and this is its posterior border. And this triangle is inferiorly bounded by the iliac crest right here. Now there is a chance of formation of hernia occasionally at this site and that is called the lumbar hernia. Now concising the points that we learnt under the triangle of auscultation, it is a small triangular interval bounded medially by the lateral border of the trapezius, bounded laterally by the medial border of the scapula, bounded inferiorly by the upper border of the latissimus dorsi. Now the floor of the triangle is formed by the 6th and 7th rib, the 6th intercostal space and the rhomboid major muscle. Now this is the only part of the back which is not covered by big muscles and the respiratory sounds of the apex of the lower lobe of the lung that is heard through a stethoscope are better heard over this triangle on each side of the body. Finally, looking at the lumbar triangle of Petit, it is another small triangle sound surrounded by muscles. It is bounded medially by the lateral border of the latissimus dorsi. It is bounded laterally by the posterior border of the external oblique muscle and it is bounded inferiorly by the iliac crest. Occasional hernia at this site is called lumbar hernia. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of the anatomy of the superficial muscles of the back and other notes of anatomy, physiology and other health science subjects, visit my website www.angelinaisaac.com. You can also visit my Instagram page Angelina Isaac Lectures, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.